Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the Village Law SEQFC preview show. It's the women's show, and boy, have we got a crackerjack lineup for you tonight. We There's a big match this weekend. It's the top of the table clash in the NPLW. It's Lions up against Gold Coast United, and we've got the two coaches on board. We've got Rob Askew. Good evening, Rob. How are you, Darren? Very well, thank you. And for Gold Coast, we've got Alex Vandalo. Alex, welcome. Thank you, Darren. And uh, <laughs> we've got these two. We've also got uh, some Brisbane Women's Premier League representation all the way from Rabina. It's Matt Glue. G'day, Matt. How are you going, Darren? Good, good. Welcome to your debut on the show. Thank you. <laughs> all right, I'm going to just quickly throw a question your way. Tell us about Rabina City Women's Program. Um, well, obviously, joined the Brisbane Women's Premier League. This is our third season now. Um, prior to that, we're actually quite a new entrant when it was the Gold Coast Premier League. Um, we've been growing quite well since. We're now the largest um, girls and females women's team on the whole of the Gold Coast. Um, I think we've got in the vicinity of 225 female players at the club. So our depth is really good, and um, we're starting to see those young players come through now as well. Just say that number again, please. I think it was about 225. That's that's at a rough guess. 180 juniors. Yeah, I need to confirm it, but it's about 225. You have just become the envy of every women's <laughs> women's program across Southeast Queensland. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, I think it's 11 junior girls teams and five senior women's teams. What's the secret of your success? Um. People that are passionate about women's football um, and, and just having, we've had separate girls and women's director over the years. So the, the girls director could just concentrate on growing the, the girls' numbers and, and it, mainly communication with the parents, I think. Let them know what's going on all the time is the, the big key there. Yep. Yeah, good stuff. Well, that's fantastic. Brilliant. Uh, more of it. And um, yes, we would encourage any other... I mean, Rabina's just got a thousand fields there as well, isn't it? So you've got the capacity to to host all those teams as well. We've got the fields as long as it doesn't rain too much, because when it's waterlogged, <laughs> we're shut for a long period of time. <laughs> right. <laughs> we'll bear that in mind. All right, let's get cracking with the MPLW, guys. I'm going to have a look at the the weekend's results first. So last weekend. Uh, Rob, you had a very convincing win over it was Brisbane City. Now Brisbane yeah. City, they've fallen into a bit of a hole there. Uh, yeah, um, but you know they, in fairness to them, they've had, they've had the they had a very easy run in their first five games, but then they pretty much copped the big three plus Virginia, who are the surprise packet. I mean, I think they've, they've lost the last four and, and that's Capalaba, Gold Coast, us and, um, and Virginia. So um, they're not, but Virginia was an unexpected result, but the other three are, are not unexpected results. All right. So just running through the weekend's results, Morton Bay had a 3-2 win over the gap. Morton Bay keep on firing on. Capalaba 11-0 over the Southwest Queensland Thunder. 9-0 Lions over Brisbane City. Gold Coast United, 6-0 win over Virginia. We'll come to that in just a moment. Eastern Suburbs, 4-1 over Logan. Peninsula Power, one goal to two against QAS. And Western Pride, two goals to three against the Sunny Coast Wanderers. And finally, South United, 3-0 over Mitchelton. Olympic having the bye. 6-0 over Virginia. What did you make of them? Pardon? 6-0 over Virginia. Tell us about your game on the weekend. Um, I, uh, I thought we played really well. For me, the most pleasing aspect of the game was that we had five different goal scorers. So we've been working um, in the last couple of weeks and in preparing a, a few different avenues to try and get into that box, especially since we've got Lions coming up. So um, for me, I thought we played well. Um, uh, Virginia started off um, fairly well. They've, they've got a few injuries, so they were under strength a little bit. Um, from what Costa told me, their, their coach. Um, however, I was really pleased with our performance, particularly uh, since we lost in the Kappa Cup game 
um, midweek prior to that. So, you know, the first thing you want to do is bounce back and um, not have two negative results. So um, all in all, um, it's been a good build up um, to this weekend's game. seven games you're obviously building these results on your defense um we know we're going to score goals we've got good speed and we've got good good attack going forward um you know you, your defense wins championships like right? if you don't if you don't concede goals and you can score goals you're more than likely going to do well so um all in all we kept a clean sheet um very pleased so far with the lead up played 25 points Gold Coast United seven games played 21 points so if you can win your catch-up games you'll obviously go top Calabar in third Morton Bay fourth South fifth Sunshine Coast Wanderers sixth Brisbane City in seventh Rob I'll throw this back to you out of the third to seventh or even eighth what's the surprise club for you there is it Morton Bay oh no Virginia are in the top seven aren't they Eighth, okay. Um, yeah. Um, well, Brisbane City are a surprise if they're still in the top seven. But I thought they'd dropped out of it. Um, I think they're a brand brand new club, you know, and uh, I don't think they can have great expectations starting from absolute scratch. But uh, So for them to be in, in the top half of the table, I think is a bit of a triumph for them. Whether they're there at the, um, at the middle of the season is another, is another matter. Um, they have some very good players, but I don't know about their depth. So, um, you know, but they've done quite well so far. I don't, I'm not surprised by Morton Bay at all. Um, you know, Morton Bay have a great coach. Dave De Silva's a very, very good coach. They've um, got some very good players that I'm familiar with, some ex-Gap girls in Jess Dillon and Charlie McLennan. Um, I also think they have some very talented young players, uh, they have weaknesses. Obviously, if you look at their results, they tend to be very high scoring affairs. Um, they get, they've got that capacity to score uh, all the way across their front three. That young, um, is it Bambling? You know, the, the centre forward, and I think she's only 17. She's a, a, a raw talent. But then, you know, you've got Sean Fryer and, and uh, this is Georgia Thompson. So there's some quality in that team, um, but they lead goals. So we'll see how they go you know, when they play the likes of Gold Coast and, um, and, and hopefully us who are, who have strong defences and are hard to score against, but have, you know, very good, good players going forward as well. But they've, they've done well, yeah. But it's not a surprise to me. What do you make of your old club, the Gap's going? Gap are pretty, yeah, they, they actually have the makings of a good team, but they have a couple of weak spots, very significant weak spots that cost them. Um, and, you know, I watched that game against Morton Bay and while I think Morton Bay probably had better possession, it was still a relatively even game in terms of chances created. It's just that they concede the softest of goals. And, um, you know, if they can, if they could rectify, you know, those weaknesses, then, then they would be potentially a, a top eight um, team. But until they fix that, uh, that, that def those defensive issues, it's, it's going to be difficult for them. And it's really sad for me, you know, but it is a rebuild for them. I appreciate that it's it's, it's a rebuild for Brisbane uh, for them, and uh, and I'm really heartened by the fact that Mick is is um, cognizant of the history of the gap. You know, they last year was the first year they missed the finals in top level women's football for something like 20 years, and uh, to be not in the first division because some for some reason we've decided that at this point in time we're going to have a um, you know split the competition into two divisions based on, on that strong heritage and that strong history and achievement for of not only results, but developing players as well. It's kind of sad, but, you know, they, I think they'll bounce back and, I, and I'm really confident Mick is, is the person to make that happen. Alex, who's been uh, some of the surprise teams for you so far? This uh, I, I tend to agree with Rob. Um, Brisbane City are a surprise, but... Um, Again, they, they had some easier games at, at the start of the year, and it's always difficult to assemble a squad from scratch. Um, no, and uh, it takes a little bit of time to get to gel. Um, Morton Bay, for me, aren't really a surprise. They're very well coached, and they've got young players that are dynamic. 
Um, they can score goals. They just leak a lot of goals if you look at their stats, as Rob said. So if they can just shore up that defence, um, they're, they're, you know, they're like QAS last year. I think they're just going to get better. So that's not really a surprise. Kapalabar with the individuals they have, that's not a surprise. And I thought Virginia, um, I, I was expecting a little bit more from Virginia on the weekend, but then I found out they weren't at full strength. So I think Virginia are, um, are doing well. That's a, that's a, a surprise. Um, but um, yeah, maybe Brisbane City and Virginia. The real surprise for me, Darren, has got to be the QAS um, and how, how, how poorly they're doing because we played them in preseason and we struggled to beat them 1-0 and we thought, geez, this is a crackerjack age group here. And um, every week I, I'm, I'm just stunned at the results, that they're, they're just not picking up games and, uh, and to only beat Peninsula 2-1, was that to me is a massive surprise. Mm, yeah. Look, let's not beat about the bush any, any further. You two are playing against each other this weekend. Top of the table clash. Alex, how are you going to approach it, mate? Is it going to be a tough physical encounter? Uh, absolutely, Will. Um, I do want to say that I had the pleasure uh, and the honour to, to coach with Rob um, in the All-Stars last year. Um, and I really was looking forward to that for two reasons. One, one because he's been so successful and um, just to, you know, see how he coaches and two i've got an insight into some of the things that he did i paid very close attention so um um you know rob's been successful for 10 years now in a row winning silverware so um that experience for me was invaluable i feel that um i have an idea of how they will play and i'm honestly looking forward to to um to this battle Just out of interest, what were the little things that you picked up? oh look i um, I asked Rob if he would do a couple of sessions and we worked together really well. Um, and um, just the way he delivers his sessions and the way he got that All-Stars team playing, and it was a joint effort between both of us. That's why we had so much success in a short period of time. So for me, that was a great experience. So I think I have an idea of um, how Rob wants to play. I've been watching their games. Um, I'm not spending too much time on that because we obviously have to focus on our game as well. Last year in the second round, I think I uh, overthought it a little bit and we got walloped um, by, by Lions. So I'm not doing that this year. Um, but there is some things that I think I can counter that Rob might do. Um, and as long as we, you know, compete and not let them settle into the rhythm that they can settle into, um, the, the, the challenge will be to do that for 90 minutes because... If you want to look at Lions, they'll come home very, very strong and score lots of goals towards the end, but so do we in many games. So um, it's really going to be a good encounter. Alex, you were, of course, the, the, the head coach of that team. So, Rob, what was your experience as the assistant? Well, we were talking about it before we came on here, and uh, and I enjoyed the experience. And I felt Alex, was he was the head coach, but he was, a, he was very inclusive and... Uh, and you know, I thought it was because he was just being kind, but now, now I know he's picking my brains. So, um, <laughs> but that's fine. I held a little back, so uh, that's all right. Um, and uh, yeah, no, it was. I thought I'd like to echo what what, he's, what Alex has said. We, I thought we we worked well together, and for me, it was a really really great experience. And uh, and and probably one I wasn't expect wasn't expecting, you know, being an assistant. And uh, but I really had a great time. And and it goes down to the way Alex just included all the coaches. Uh, as part of a team, and we were all we all contributed, and and I enjoyed that. Yeah, it was good. Of course, uh, came out tops, uh, winning against New South Wales. I can hardly hear you, mate. Oh, you beat New South Wales. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, good. <laughs> so, how are you going to approach this game? How am I going to approach? Well, look, there's no secret to there are no secrets because we all have the video, so we can watch our team, each our, you know, our opponents play and. And my philosophy as a coach is always that, um, you know, I don't, and, I, and this is something I learned a long time ago, is that you don't just go and change things from week to week. Players don't, I don't think players like that. When you, when you change your tactics, you change the system for an opponent. They need, they need time to get into a rhythm, and, um, and that's my approach. I, I have very clear structures about the way I want my team to play, and... Um, my focus is always on on 
focusing on the way my team plays and making sure that we are or have this mentality of continuous improvement and that if we keep getting better and better then you know teams just have to be able to deal with us the way we play is is clear we, we you see it in the videos we we like to play the we like to keep the ball we like to move around the field we like to um keep possession recycle things when things close down but we like to play the ball forward quickly and and beat lines and that's what we're going to we're going to do on the weekend yeah yeah, um, I'm like Rob as well. We cannot change from week to week and spend too much time focusing on the, on the opponents. Um, what we've done this week during training is just made the players aware of certain movements and certain things that may happen. But um, again, we have to give our players the freedom to see and read the game as they do. Um, again, we, you know, the basics, we try and hold our shape and we do all the things that most teams, you'll hear that most coaches say to their teams. The thing is we do that, we, we can do that quite well, um, as can the top teams. Um, you know, Lions do that very well in, in, in transition, in, in, in attack, in defence. They do all the, the simple things very, very well and efficiently. So um, as Rob said, there's no secrets. It'll be a, it'll be a tough competition. Um, it will be a battle right till the end, in my opinion. But um, I'm really yeah. looking forward to it. Just looking at the other matches uh, this weekend, uh, Capella Bar are taking on Western Pride. I believe that game is tonight. Um, yeah, I heard it is tonight. Yeah, Brisbane City hosting Morton Bay, Peninsula Power up against South United, Eastern Suburbs against Olympic, Mitchelton hosting Southwest Queensland Thunder, Sunny Coast Wanderers up against Logan, QAS up against the Gap, and Virginia have the bye. Just looking at those games, Sunny Coast Wanderers against Logan, that one intrigues me. You know, now that you say it, if, if there was a surprise team, it is probably Sunny Coast Wanderers. Yeah, it eluded me before. Uh, just amassing that local talent and, and gelling them into a unit, isn't it? Well, they're a whole zone. They should be a strong team. Yep. Should be like the Gold Coast. You know, it's a whole region that they have the one team for. And it's... And they used to be, they used to be an entity and they were always very difficult to beat, one of our toughest games. And then they just sort of fell in a hole for, a, you know, four or five years, but it's great to see them back. And I know that Beck Horsey's there and uh, she's determined for them to become a horse. And and uh, with quality people like her, they're driving things, it's, it's bound to be successful. Can't hear you, Darren. Well, you're very soft, mate. <laughs> I'm getting as close to it as I can. Okay. Eastern suburbs are up against Olympic, so it's a local derby this weekend. Yeah. Be an interesting uh, game. It is an interesting game because it, 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 they are rivals and um, they played each other in the cup last week, I think, and uh, Olympic won that quite easily. But I understand uh, there, were, well, there were quite a few East first team players that, that weren't playing, so I believe believe that East are uh, probably prioritising the, the league, which is probably a smart thing to do, given what we're dealing with this year and in separating into two leagues. So um, I've got to say, I've been really surprised and impressed by East's results since the, they um, changed coach. They, they were undefeated, basically, I think, in the league, weren't they, since, since they changed coach? And, uh, yeah, so that could be a difficult game for Olympic, who I think are a team that are really on the improve. Yeah. Beard, the Melbourne victory winning player, uh, premiership player, uh, signing for the club. That's a, an amazing coup. It is massive, considering she is a, I thought she was a fairly devoted East person. Yeah, so. All right, let's have a look now at the Brisbane Women's Premier League. Matt, we're going to bring you in here. We'll give you a big chance. All right, let's have a look at the results of the weekend. <laughs> Yep, that's right, Darren. Um, AC Karina, we've always seemed to have a tough game against them. Um, probably a game we should have won. We had more chances, but also a game where I think we had our worst performance of the year. Um, I went back and reviewed the video um, on Monday. And we worked a lot tonight on going back to um, exactly what the other two coaches alluded to, just playing our game and playing the same style of football week in, week out, regardless of your opposition. 
Um, AC Karina came out the blocks pretty hard on us and um, the girls got into a little bit of a panic and started playing more of a direct game rather than looking to pass the ball around and play a good possession game of football. Um, so tonight's training session was actually really good. So hopefully we'll bounce back from that um, and uh, go forward from here. On top, undefeated with eight wins from eight. Can you see them losing a game this season? Oh, Broadbeach are beatable. Um, when we played them, it was they were they were better the, the better side. It was a nil all game up until about the sixty seven minute mark. Um, then they they kind of broke away from there. Um, they had a few more chances they they probably could have um, capitalised on. But um, if you put it into perspective for them, they've not missed a training session, whereas you look at the likes of ours, and I know Karina were in the same boat, had nearly five weeks without training over that period of rain. Um, again, this was our first Thursday session that we've had in the last three weeks. Um, we've got two or three makeup games, same as Karina and um, Broadbeach have managed to play all those. So they're, they're probably ahead of the competition in as far as building their combinations go. Um, so no, no doubt once the other teams get a bit more time together, um, they'll catch up on them a bit. Now, I can see them losing a, a game, but they, they're definitely the, the benchmark in the competition at the moment. Right, so yes. Um, so second place on 16, Kabina in, in third on 11, but of course two make-up games. Karina are in fourth on 10, as well as UQFC. All right. Now, let's have a look at this weekend's fixtures. And you're taking on the lakes. You've got the big, well, they've got the big trip coming down yeah. the M1 to take you, take you on. Thankfully, they have to do it twice and we only have to do it once. Uh, we scored there. <laughs> we had Kat Smith on, Smythe on the show a couple of weeks ago. Um, have you seen any footage of them? How do you, how do you expect the game to play out? Uh, we played them... Uh, two weeks ago, um, and it was 10 nil. So there wasn't really uh, to us. So there wasn't really much we could take out of it. But um, even though it was a, a high score line, there was passages passages of the game where Lakes actually played quite well. So um, I know they're a totally different side to what they had last year. Uh, a number of players are stepping up for, from some lower competitions, but Kath's doing a really good job with them. And, um, you know, you can see the improvement coming in their game and who knows what they'll be like at the end of the season. We've also got another top of the table clash, Broadbeach taking on Kangaroo Point Rovers. How do you see that one going? Uh, I think Broadbeach will come away with the win there. Um, Kangaroo Point, uh, a, a very well-drilled side, well-coached side, um, play some good structures, but... There's just too much talent in that Broad Beach lineup for them, I think. Just rounding out the, uh, the weekend's fixtures, Grange Thistle are hosting Annalee and AC Karina are taking on UQFC. It was a game that I saw just a couple of weeks ago, so they're playing each other again. Uh, it was a catch up game. Yes. That, that'll be why. That'll be why. All right, let's quickly move on to Capital League One. Now, I don't expect you guys to have a great deal of knowledge there, so we'll just run through the results and the ladder and, and this weekend's fixtures. Mount Gavad had a 2-0 win over Caboolture. Pine Hills 4-0 over Southside Eagles. Turinga Rovers 5-0 over Tawong. Ipswich Knights 8-1 over North Star. And North Brisbane 1-0 over Albany Creek. Looking at the latter, Ipswich Knights are still on top, undefeated on 15 points with Turinga, Pine Hills and Albany Creek making up the top four. Looking at fixtures this weekend, Southside Eagles up against Tawong, North Star against Mount Gavad, Pine Hills up against Caboolture. Albany Creek host Ipswich Knights and Turinga take on North Brisbane. All right. So, Matt, just listening to the, the other two coaches having their conversation before, did you did you pick up anything there that you sort of think, oh, that might be something that I should implement with my team? <laughs> uh, nothing that I'm not trying to implement already um, at the moment for us. It's just about getting numbers to training and getting some good training sessions in. So uh, much the same as the other two coaches, I like to not worry too much about who we play on the weekend. It's just about trying to, to create our own playing style and play that week in, week out. How long have you been coach of the, the team for? Um, this is my third year involved with senior football. Um, my Going into my 12th season with the club. So I did a number of years in the juniors. 
Um, I was the girls director, helped build our girls program up. Um, and then there was a side that I stuck with all the way from under 11s through to um, uh, reserves when we first stepped up into BWPL. So that was my introduction into senior football. And this is a question to both you and Alex. Is there a relationship between Gold Coast United and the, Gold, and the other Gold Coast clubs? Yeah, I'll step in there. There, there is, uh, I know we've got a pretty good bond with um, Gold Coast United, even though Alex and I have never sat down personally and had a, a chat. Um, we've got a development centre that comes down here and does some training with some Rabina coaches and some Gold Coast United coaches. Um, and there's also a number of girls that have come through the Rabina system that are now um, in Gold Coast United, uh, including a couple that I coach that are playing for Alex this year. Yeah. Yeah, just to add to that, Darren, we've got some exceptional young juniors coming in from Rabina, our under-16s girls team who are doing very well this year. We've got four young players that came from Rabina, um, outstanding players. So Rabina are doing a really good job at um, developing these players and we are working together. The whole idea is to engage, engage, the, local club, engage the local clubs, work together and, and provide the pathway for the girls that want to excel. So um, both clubs know that. Um, we're working together well um, and hopefully it keeps going. All right, guys, we might leave the show there. Thank you very much for uh, joining us this evening. So Alex Bandalo and Rob Askew from Gold Coast United the Lions, best of luck this weekend. Hope it's a great game. It will be. It will be. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. Look Thanks, forward mate. to seeing you, mate. See you then. Okay. We're uh, making your debut tonight. Great to have you with us. Thanks, Darren. See you soon, Matty. We'll catch up. Yeah, definitely. Okay, mate. Bye-bye. See ya. It's the SC3FC preview show, Women's Edition. Get out and see a game this weekend. There's some fantastic fixtures going on out there. But we will see you next week.